We're going to move on now to um, our second document, and let me put the link in the chat to the Honduran birth certificate, copy link address, and you can download this. And also, everybody who's on the call, um, who when you put in your email address, we use those, and after a couple of days, like probably on Monday, we'll send out an email that has a link to the recording on YouTube, or you can go to our YouTube channel for text and translation. And we also send out the finished document as we translate it. If you want to have a reference um, and to use that for, you can use it for future jobs, just update it. The thing is, if you're updating an old translation for a new client, be careful. <laughs> what, what, what tends to happen? You tend to <laughs> skip something because you're like, okay, if everything's filled in, yeah. And so um, one of our translators, the the one that uh, that we just did, the Cuban, um, there's there's a part that has three lines, and it's the vital statistics registry of whatever place, and then the name of the municipality and the name of the province. And she just forever forgets to change what the where the vital statistics registry is. She gets the municipality changed, she gets the province changed, but she's I don't know, Mental she just block. doesn't see it. Yeah, it's like it doesn't even exist. And she will just leave it however her last one was, and she'll send it to me, and I'm like... <laughs> There's things that I always miss, too. Yeah. <laughs> it's I, invisible to me. Yeah. Well, and I used to do sixes and sevens. It's not like I do not know the difference between seis and siete, right? Like, I get it. Seis, seis, siete. Maybe seis, seis, siete. I know. I know. But somehow, when I see them in print... <laughs> they switch it's like I, I dysgraphia or dis there's, uh, there's a yeah, dis that has to yeah but it's like I'm a five-year-old that just doesn't really know my numbers yet <laughs> and time and time again my proofreader will be like you yeah, switch them again it says six not seven like on the screen right now the essay says that is 16 not 17 but I about half the time I'll just put 17 why not why not Okay, so next we have the blank sample Honduran birth certificate. I'd open the one that's already translated, so I'm going to switch out and share a different screen here. There we go. Back to Zoom. So many little icons to keep track of. Um, blank sample there. Okay, give me a thumbs up if you can see my um, Honduran birth certificate in Word now. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank All right. you. So we're fun. just going to skip over the first page entirely because we've covered that before and zoom in close since um, our eyes are not as good as they used to be. We've got to make it really big here. Uh, go to view, split, and scroll down to page three where we're going to start typing the translation. And I'm just going to type and you, you narrate. Okay. Tell us what's going All right. On. So first we're going to start our table because we love tables. We don't like text boxes. So we're going to make a three-column table because I can see the RNP, the main title, and the number with the QR code on the other end. And so we're going to start with that. Um, you can mention, if it's in color, you can mention that it's a green thing. You don't have to. Um, you can mention it. Go mention that. Green logo. Because if they, if let's say this is for USAIS, for example, they're giving the original and the translation together. It, it should be the exact same one. Like the thing that they ask you to translate should be the exact same thing that they hand USAS because if it's not, there's a chance that one of them says copy or one of them has a different number or one of them has a different date and that can cause the translation to be rejected because you're not putting in the exact same information that's on the translation. You have manipulated it. And you didn't, you just worked with what they gave you, but if they give them a different version of it, and so if you have a green one, it should be green, but if they then give a copy that's a black and white copy, so sometimes I mention that it's green and sometimes I don't. Um, also, I see on this that there's some blue stuff in the background, and so before I go very far, I want to scroll it so we can see the, your um, original. Yeah. You see that blue stuff? Mm -hmm. And that's got text on it. Yeah. And so I'm going to be sure and mention that somewhere. I like to do it at the beginning because otherwise I'll forget about it. Yeah, I'll um, do that now. Yeah, you can do it whenever you want, as long as it gets mentioned in there somewhere that there's that that watermark on there, because that is the kind of thing that that needs to get mentioned. Whether you, whether or not you say it's blue, there's a watermark in the background. Yeah. So I'm going to put it in as a translator's note in square brackets here and say background. Whoops, doesn't need to be all caps. 
Okay. Background watermark with coat of arms. Yeah. And on your copy, that may be harder to see, but we could see it better on the original here. Um, and what it says in the text of the coat of arms is Republic of Honduras. Oh, tell them about our Honduras trip. Like oh, okay. So yeah, on for our, the Honduran who's on the car. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we went to as part of our honeymoon trip a million years ago when we got married. Uh, we were in Tegucigalpa for a night or two, three. I don't know how long. Yeah. It was a really long time ago, and I really don't remember much about it. But we did stay in a very nice hotel that was very tall, and could see, you know, around some of Tegucigalpa. Some and, great pupusas. Yeah, was that in Honduras? Yeah, our pupusa Honduran. Or was that in Osaba? <laughs> I don't remember. It's one of those streets that they have in a lot of different countries, but they call them different things depending on where you are. Yeah, yeah. and it, like I said, we got married a really long time ago, and it's just hard to remember all the things that happened way back then. But it was lovely. It was nice. I do remember. You want to go back? Yeah, I do remember. Um, kind of driving around out a little bit outside of the city and seeing just so much, it was so, so much lush greenery. It was just very green, very big plants and, and very just tropical. Yeah, very lush. Okay, so it's blurred out on your copy, but on the original, this is clearly a QR code here on the right. Um, Marta says pupusas on the Honduras. Gracias. All right. I do remember liking pupusas. <laughs> Whoever that was. We, we, we drove all around Central and Mexico, uh, Eastern Mexico and Central America, so it's hard to keep track. Yeah. Um, a comment from Derek. All right. Ah, okay. Well, you should cool. make us a cake. <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get back to that later. Yeah, we'll, we'll circle back. <laughs> okay, okay, now we're going to go with the actual text of this sentence here. El infrascrito registrador civil municipal certifica. I'm going to say the undersigned municipal civil registrar certifies. It's all caps in the original. I'll put it in all caps. Not a big deal, but it helps people find the corresponding part of the translation. Okay, and I'm typing in Spanish. <laughs> that in the um, birth archives, they capitalize archives. Now that, I don't know why it's capitalized, and I don't like it, so I'm going to leave it lowercase in English. And I might say birth records, because birth. archives and records, records, like, we tend to think of archives as old things in English. Mm -hmm. They're not necessarily archives and records there are the same thing, but I would call it records. To be found. Number. Are you okay with that birth certificate to be found for San Quentra? Is is found? I would say is found. found. That's that a more, more natural. Yeah. Is found. Or a birth, I would put birth certificate first because that's the, the subject of the sentence. It's found a birth certificate. No, I would say a birth certificate is found. <sighs> Fine. A birth certificate yeah. is found. Number. Or birth certificate number, blah, 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 is found. Located on birth paper. Birth certificate number, and then this long number with, I'm just going to yeah. space it out so it looks kind of like that. I'm not going to bother with those yeah, boxes. Yeah, I was going to say, I would not make all those boxes. I mean, if you want to, if you want to be fancy, or if you're doing a lot of 100 birth certificates and know you're going to reuse it a bunch, sure, take the time, make those little boxes. That's very pretty. But... If it's going to be a one and done, I wouldn't take the time. I would underline those though. Of the year 2015. And that it pertenece a, belongs to, or pertains to? Um, I like uh, oh. belongs to. Corresponds to. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Corresponds. I, I was uh, surprised to hear your voice coming out of what I thought was my Alexa, Miguel. Because <laughs> the speaker's right next to the Alexa. I was like, wow, Alexa sounds really uh, deep today. <laughs> Alexa's got a little bit of a chest cold there. Corresponds to is another great option. I'm going to go back and underline these numbers just so it looks a little bit more like the original. Purely stylistic choice here. Um, and then go down to the next space and put in A, write parentheses, hit control U to underline these names and caps locks and type out Sepulveda, which would have an accent mark on the E if they had bothered to oh, put that. 
Se pulve. Pulve. Right, right. That's what I meant. I was just seeing if you were paying attention. Um, B. Gracia. Now, maybe the name is actually Garcia, and that's a typo, but what do we do if there's a typo? We have to show the typo. If, if, if we really think it's Garcia, like the person that came in is Garcia, and everywhere else on the, the document it says Garcia, and there's this one thing that says Gracia, you could put sick in, in uh, brackets, the square brackets that indicate a translator's note. You could put S-I-C, which means I'm writing it the same way that I found it written. It's, it's a, uh, the Latin, there's a longer phrase, but sick just means they made a mistake, so I'm duplicating the mistake. It's not my mistake. <laughs> Don't blame me. Right, right. Um, and that's important. You cannot switch it. You cannot fix it. If it says Garcia everywhere, but in this one spot where it says Gracia, don't change it. It's not It's not our job to change it. The record needs to be changed. The person whose birth certificate is should go back to their their vital statistics office and, and get that fixed. But it, that's not what we do. We translate. We don't fix that vital statistics records. And so you need to, to make sure that, that if you have it wrong, that it's or that, that if they have it wrong, that you also uh, replicate the mistake, because that is something that, that uh, USAIS would reject a translation for if you start making up spellings for people's names or changing the name from Maria to Mary or <laughs> or anything like that, correcting things that you think are wrong. It, it's not up to us. They to don't decide. like that. No. So here's one way of handling the little check boxes. If you want to take a little bit longer to make it prettier, you can go up to insert symbols and find a square with an X in it to put after the female and a, a square with no X in it to put after the male. But or if you if you are fancy and you have there's a, another um, uh, thing here at the top. I'm going to just steal your mouse real quick up here um, where where you've got home insert draw design lab blah blah blah. There's another one that you can have up here. Um, Symbols? No, it's not design. It's um, I can't remember what it's called, but it it has a whole different set of of stuff that you can add in. And one of those is a checkbox, and it, it makes a little square. And if you click on it, it puts the X in there, and you click on it again, and that X disappears. And if you want to be fancy, you can go that route. I'll have to look that up and see what the name of that is. When we um, send out a, send out other information, I'll figure out what that thing is. And so you when you're when you're customizing how your word is laid out. You can include that distributor or start with a D, I think. I haven't used that. Oh, it's great. It's great. Well, now you tell me. Yeah. Place, fancy. date, and order of birth. Uh, you are fancy. Um, San Pedro Sula. I'll underline that. And then, oops, I don't want underlining. Follow me. Cortez, si, Honduras. I noticed the original for some reason is um, italicized. So if you want to, you can italicize that. I don't feel like it. Nobody's going to care. Um, and this is another situation where if you want to create a table and, and make it so that all you have to do is click from one table to the next to, to fill in blank lines, you can do that. Yeah, we actually have a table for when we're doing these. But it took a while to create, and we just got half an hour for Honduras, and right. so I'm not going to take the time to make it look that nice. That's fine. But I do want to sort of center these a little better, because I'm just a little bit in or tenor that way. Municipality, department. Departments don't exist in this sense in, in the U.S., in English. And so if you yep. wanted to use some other word for that, you could. But... But it's understandable. Department means a division of something. And so even if people aren't familiar with the Honduran political structure, they'll guess a uh, department must be something larger than a city and smaller than a country. Please and I do think enough countries use departments that, I th again, I think immigration officers who are receiving this sort of information will go, oh, yeah, yeah I've heard of that before. Doesn't... Um, Columbia use departments too. I don't know what countries all do, but I know several of them do. Yeah. Okay, so that is the A B C line. Um, now for the D E F line. Uh, we have a chat El Salvador and Nicaragua. Thank you, Martha. Um, because I can see that the next two lines are formatted the same as this one, I'm going to copy and paste, and then just change the things that 
change. Oh, it's going to do that thing where it asks me to continue numbering. Yeah, but I want to continue with D. So set numbering value at D. And then am I going to have to do that for all of these? No, it doesn't know what you're doing. E. <laughs> okay. I'll do it manually. Yeah. Fine. Um, then for the day, month, and year, uh, when you usually when you talk about dates, how do you handle dates and the different order of month and well, day? Well, when a that? boy asks me on a date. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. No, sorry. Um, so in this situation, I would write it out like it is. Um, I, because you've got a blank and, and you just, in order to keep the formatting as similar to this as possible, we've got the ABC, DEF, I would just put 7 January 2015. I would leave it the same. Sometimes you've got kind of a blank line where they're saying el 10 de noviembre del 2019 or whatever. And I would just switch that into the American format, November 10th, 2019 or whatever the date was that I just said. Um, if it's if it's in a sentence or or kind of written out, I would write it out the way I would in English normally. If it's something like this where it's fitting into a little table or you're filling in the blanks in this sort of way, I, I think I would leave it that way. Yeah. But again, you know, it's subjective as long as the information is conveyed in. But I think it's important to, to make it easy for the monolingual. Uh, Sometimes it's it's really easy for those of us who are bilingual to forget that not everyone is. And so you look at it and go, I mean, it's obvious what it says. Well, it's obvious because you know both languages. But consider if this were written in Chinese or some language that you don't speak that has a different alphabet, how easy would it be for you to understand? And for a monolingual native English speaker, it can be just that confusing, even though all the letters are letters that I know, all the numbers are numbers that I know, it can be equally confusing for a monolingual English speaker to understand something in Spanish as it is for you or I to understand something in Chinese or Arabic or some alphabet that we don't recognize, that we don't deal with. And so setting it up with the A, B, C, D, E, F, so that it's easy to find the information, I think is important for clarity. Developer tab. That's the one. Developer tab. Oh. Thank you, Tracy. That's the one. The developer tab. And it's got those little boxes, and you can just you add it in, and then you click, and there's the X, and you click, and the X disappears, and it's fantastic. I'll check that out. After yeah. This call. So I'm going to copy and paste this um, block uh, for the names, which is similar to that um, for the registrant that we already used. Um, but now we're talking about the father. Let me put a colon in here so it matches that format. Um, his name is Sepulveda Maldonado. First surname, second surname. Um, sometimes uh, we call these up um, paternal surname and maternal surname, depending on what it is in the original. Yeah, that's usually when it's talking about grandparents that we include that. Okay. Um, and a note about padre and madre, um, some birth certificates now are saying padre and padre, and, they, and, and so you would want to translate that parent um, because of the increase in um, same-sex couples that are adopting or having children or whatever. And so if it's padre and padre, you're going to want to be sure and, and call those parents because they're, it's an, an effort to be gender neutral, even though it is still gender specific in Spanish. Yeah. At this point, that's the best um, prevention. Right. And so if you see that, same thing with um, Contrayente, if you're looking at um, uh, the a marriage certificate, if it says El Contrayente and La Contrayente, then you can specify that it's the bride and the groom or the husband and the wife or the, you know, however you render that in your translation. But if it just says Contrayente, Contrayente, then I would say spouse. Spouse and spouse. Yeah. yeah. Because uh, you've got to have a gender neutral term. If, if it's gender neutral or trying to be in in the source language, then you need to do your best to be gender neutral in the target language as well. Cierto. Nationality. Okay, I'm scrolling up and down a lot. I hope I'm not skipping over anything. If you guys who are watching see me make a mistake, 
I don't mind at all. You all put, in put a, out. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is a collaboration right here. And it's distracting to, you know, usually I'm focused by myself working on this. It's kind of distracting to do it before an audience, but I'm I'm happy to have you. With somebody prattling in one ear. You, you never prattle, honey. I'm happy to have you help me make it the best translation possible. We are colleagues. So next we have the number three, um, identity number, full name, and nationality of the mother, another, the mother, uh, mother, brother from another mother. <laughs> uh, 0022, 1985, 09330, and her first name, surname is Gracia. Uh, second surname, Medellin. Sounds more like a Colombian name for some reason. Mm -hmm. Ana Cla I just made up these names. I don't know where they're from. Ana Claudia. And she is oh, also. Ana Claudia. Yeah. Um, we can name our next daughter that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're going to have so many more of those. <laughs> okay. Um, notas marginales. 16. We are not having any more. Authorized. Authorized marginal notes. None. Oh, that's all capitalized. Now, if you want to, you can put in all of these um, horizontal lines. Whoops, control you. All these horizontal lines, there's four lines going across. I feel it's a waste of time, so I'm not going to bother, but you do you. And then we have extendida in. That looks like the English verb extended, but it's not really. I would say the closest equivalent is issued. Issued in La Ceiba, Atlantia. Sounds like Atlantis. Yeah. Um, municipality is municipio and department. And again, if you want to make it a little prettier, you can space it out and try to make bigger fonts where the fonts are bigger, but. Who's got time for that? <laughs> this really is kind of a quick and dirty. Like if we were really doing this, we would probably take the time to make the text underneath municipality would be a little smaller. We would space it out, probably extend those lines, maybe make tables and things like this. But we've got about five minutes to finish this up. And so we're just trying to get to the end of the document. <laughs> if you actually hire us to do a translation, be like, wow, this is a lot nicer than I was expecting. Because right. <laughs> <laughs> we really do take more than half an hour. Yeah. And, here, and so here's the situation. Okay, so a los ocho, de, ocho días del mes de junio del 2016, I would probably just write that as on June 8, 2016, or 2017, because I'm me, and my proofreader would say, no, no, 16. But I would still just write it out as a date, because you can, I mean, in English, you find things like this, too, on the eighth day of the month of whatever. Of on the a day diploma or something Yeah, fancy. and, you know, people like to be fancy and use lots of words that take up lots of room. And so that's fine. But I like it to be easy to read. I like to be able to look at it and go, what's the date? June 8th. And so that's that would be my preference. Again, the UCIS officer is looking at it going, I just want to know when this happened. And so whatever works. And if you, so if you are the kind that likes to be super duper faithful to the original, do it. Municipal vital statistic. Now, probably on your screen, you can't see the little fine print in this rubber stamp. But again, we would have gotten either the original or a PDF with a little more detail. And we could zoom in on that. And so I know this says a registro civil municipal, which is municipal vital statistics. Yeah. Is that what we called it before? Whatever you call it earlier in the document, try to be consistent, at least within the document, even though there are different ways to say so it. So you're calling it... Um, Registro Civil Municipal, which also... You have vital, municipal vital records here, okay. and you have municipal civil registrar here. Registro Civil Municipal. So which one should we go with? Let's pick one. What does it say, Per? Oh, the same. Oh, you did it too, El Registro Civil Municipal. Municipal I like records. municipal vital records. Municipal vital records. But then this municipal. is municipal vital um, registrar. So oh, that gets tricky. Civil. Municipal, civil municipal vital records. Then maybe municipal vital registry. 
this provital registry. These are synonymous, I would say. You know, synonym doesn't mean exactly the same, but it means that they are in some context interchangeable. Municipal vital records, so mm -hmm. that's the so same. Change, so change statistics to records. Okay. But yeah, that's a great point is pick one and then be consistent because if they're calling it the same thing three or four times in the document, you need to call it the same thing three or four times in the document. Otherwise, it's confusing. So pick one, decide what you feel best conveys the idea Stick as close as you can to the original while conveying something meaningful in the target language. And then stand by your choice. Signature and seal of the um, vital registrador civil, registrar of vital records. Should you actually expand the CA into Central America or should you just leave it as CA? I expand it because. I feel like CA is not a common abbreviation that everyone in the US understands. And you could put it in brackets, you know, if you want to just put CA and then put in brackets Central America so that it's clear to the to the recipient what that is. Um, all across Central America, it's super duper obvious what it is, like painfully obvious. You would never even think about writing it out because everybody knows what it is. But here it's just not. And so the the u.s immigration officer or whoever is receiving the document we keep referring to uscis but it you know could be going to a number of different places they're not going to know they may i mean they might but i do think it should be spelled out even if it's just in brackets and a translator's note and so down here we have some other probably acronyms rdb maybe acronyms maybe an abbreviation we looked it up and couldn't figure out what these stand for and so we're just leaving them in the original as the next best thing. There's a little tiny fine print that you can probably not even see on your screen that's over the RNP logo. Close your parentheses. Oh, I did that last time too. Um, square green logo with people and stars. Is that what you called it at the top of the page? Oh. You had well, that logo at the top of the page. You need to see. call it the same thing. Green logo with people and stars. So I'm just gonna delete the square. Good. Be consistent. Good call. I'm so glad I brought you along today. RNP. <laughs> I brought you along, dear. <laughs> National Registry of <laughs> And that is another thing. Like some people call that National People's Registry. Yeah. That's fine. It's people. They're mm. being registered. Nimala. And then this uh, this horizontal line right here down at the bottom, that may be like a, another uh, Row of microprint. Uh, I don't know. I might just put it on there to indicate. Yeah, there's a line there. I'm not sure what it is. Again, you could put a bracketed comment. That if, if you're pretty sure it says something, but you can't really tell what, a legible microprint or something like a legible microtext, something along those lines yeah. to indicate there's words there, but I don't know what they yep. say. Now, in this case, if they were important, it would be bigger. Yeah. In this case, uh, my my ending line and my end of translation mark has been sort of pushed down off the page. And I don't like when you have a final page that just has something irrelevant like that. So I would go in and take out some of these extra spaces and try to make it all fit. Same. It's just a little more balanced that way. But then um, I would go back through at this point and proofread it myself as a translator and then pass it off to another proofreader like Margaret and she would go through it again too, especially looking for um, the names of the important of the key people and any numbers like their date of birth, which are the, the most uh, vital information to get right for the application. Yeah, you want to make sure that the dates are correct, the spelling of the people's names are correct, the gender of the person, the sex shown on the birth certificate is correct. Um, you know, if the, the name of the vital statistics registrar, maybe like there, there are some things that if, if something got misspelled, it wouldn't be the end of the world. But for heaven's sake, <laughs> make sure the registrant's name is spelled correctly. Make sure his parents' names are spelled correctly. Yeah. Double, triple check that. Okay. Any questions uh, before I stop screen share? Again, I will email out the final version to everybody who's who was on the Zoom call and put in their email address. That's how we gather them. 